Good morning, everyone. It's so lovely to have you with us again. And also on this spectacular Sunday, Ben Miller, the author, icon, actor, with some very impressive credits. Bridgerton, Paddington 2, Johnny English, Professor T. The list is so long that I'll be here till part two if I don't stop now. And alongside him, singing sensation Claire Richards, who has over 400 weeks in the top 40 as part of Mega Group Steps and has just released her new solo album. She is a true pop legend. Welcome to you both. <laughs> Am I bringing you both together for the first time or you've met before? Yeah, we're a new band. All right, uh, okay. <laughs> here to announce. Claire and Ben. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this feels like ben an Claire. Didn't Blair. Like win the focus groups. But, no. Yeah. Great. The chemistry is flowing. We like that in part one. <laughs> well, later in the show, we're going to be joined by an expert who's been helping women with their health for over 20 years. Dr. Neetu Bajakal was in the studio to talk about fertility, menopause, and more. And at the end of the show, we'll be making recycled wallets out of old plastic bags in an upcycling workshop. Looking forward to that. <laughs> what a Sunday. <laughs> look, look at everything I've got lined up for you guys. <laughs> I bet you're, bet you're glad you got out of bed this it's morning. It's a perfect day. <laughs> My wallet really needs replacing. So. Yeah. Oh, no, you can't keep them. They're just no. props for oh. the show. Yeah. <laughs> now, I always start off um, by asking my guests their background. So this isn't where I start pulling skeletons out of the cupboard. That will come in part that's four. Later. Okay. Yeah, that's later. Um, <laughs> it's actually your screensaver, the background of your phone, because I do think that can be quite revealing about a person so Claire we'll start with you first okay. what's your background um, mine's my kids oh nice but okay. from oh, yeah look. they're not that little anymore oh they're um yeah they're nuclear cute I know yeah. how far yeah. apart are they in age they're just under three years oh so nice it's okay two years nine months actually yeah I um but yeah, they're sixteen and thirteen now. So oh, bit oh yeah. wow! Okay. It's been, I just love that. But you so still much. keep that one. Yeah. That's nice. How do they yeah. feel about yeah. that on your phone? Now they're sixteen and thirteen. A bit. I don't know. I, don't, I think they would prefer a picture of them younger than now because they don't really. Certainly, Charlie won't let me take photos of him at the moment. <laughs> yeah. He's like, "What are you doing with that picture? <laughs> <laughs> don't put it on Instagram." He needs to get copy okay. approval. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ben, what about you? What's on your phone background? So mine is my dog Stevie. I've got. Uh, oh. oh, oh that's a handsome be dog. Be still, my beating heart. Yeah, so is it cute. weird to say a dog's handsome? Can I say a dog? She. 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 Oh, she. After okay. Stevie Nicks. Oh, of course. <gasps> Right, okay. okay. I like that, yeah. You'd guess that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, Can you guess what breed she is, though? Um, Some kind of doodle. Yeah. Uh, Lab doodle. Not even... No. I'll, give, I'll give you, yeah, part way there. She's um, a double doodle. I think, I feel like, as I say that, I feel like I've made that up. <laughs> a doodle doodle. A double doodle. Double. So she is a... So you take a, a labradoodle, right. mate with a golden doodle. Oh, my goodness. Labradoodle, golden doodle. Whoosh, wow. Double doodle. Well, is she made a very gorgeous <laughs> Does she Just do ignore that? what I'm doing with my fingers. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> a meaningless gesture. Fascinated by that. She's yeah. super smart. She's super friendly. She's got a great blow dry. I mean, that's She's what I'm going to Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the maintenance, She's the hair care cool. is just <laughs> off the scale, unfortunately. <laughs> But she Lovely colour as well. Yeah. Now, Claire, before we go any further, we must congratulate you because this is very exciting. Thank we you. have your new uh, second solo album, yep. Euphoria, here on vinyl. Okay. That proper but vinyl. I know. Yeah. It's back it's now, isn't it? Yeah. Look absolutely gorgeous. So, very exciting. And it's a second solo album. Yes. Is it nerve wracking um, releasing solo music? It is, because, I mean, it's always nerve wracking releasing any music, even yeah. with steps, because you just, even after all these years, you just don't know what's going to happen. But I think with steps, is. It's a little bit more confidence because we've got such an amazing fan base. They're so loyal, aren't they? Yeah, they're so yeah. loyal. But yeah, I think it's it's all on me now. I haven't got any, I can't share the burden with anybody. It's all yeah. down to me. So um, is it liberating though as well to go out there on your own and and do it yourself? Yeah, it's nice to go up. That's why we do have these little breaks so we can go off and do bits and bobs on our own. So when we do come back together, it feels refreshed. And yeah. it feels like we've got something to talk about rather than ourselves. It's a bit like marriage when you go to I know, work, I know. And then you've got something to say at the but it's, yeah, it's great. I'm really, I'm really excited about it. And it feels, it feels good, this one. Yeah. Well, we've got a little clip, actually. We've got a clip of No More Tears, the music video. Let's have a look.
God, I love that. Do you know what I love in the video as well? You both look like you're having so much fun. Yeah. It makes me want to have fun. Yeah, you know? it was great. And I think both. Uh, there was a bit of kind of mutual... I mean, she's so beautiful, Delta, and I was a bit kind of... You know, when you see her in the flesh, I was a bit in awe a little bit. But she's... Um, it was, she was so lovely, and we had such a lovely time. Are we and we together in the studio when you did the duet, or...? No, so we did just video. for the video, yeah. So oh, well, we always that must have been exciting. As yeah, well, it was. It was fun, and she, luckily she was here, and yeah. she, and we kind of had a lovely afternoon filming that, and just kind of getting to know each other and chatting. And is that the first time you'd worked with Delta Goodrum then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. she's not the only collab on the album, is she? There's a few. No, well, there's two. So there's that, that one with Delta, and I've done Summer Night City with Andy Bell from Erasure. Oh, so, wow. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Which is it's really it's like a bit of a full circle thing. So we met yeah. years ago. We did Pop Star to Opera Star. Um, about 12 years ago and I think because Erasure had quite a connection with ABBA and so have Steps mm. so kind of coming together to do an ABBA track together which seemed quite full circle. Yeah. Is there a sort of a dream person for you that you'd like to duet with? I don't know. I mean my absolute idol was Karen Carpenter so right. I mean that obviously would have been incredible but I I mean, I wouldn't say no to Michael Bublé. That oh, yeah, nice. yeah, nice Christmas one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. that would be cool. <laughs> I mean, there was an absolute legend that you worked uh, alongside with, Celine Dion, supporting her. That was in 2019 at Hyde yeah. Park. I heard you were going to offer her sticky toffee pudding. Did you ever get round to that? <laughs> Do you know, she... Um, when she did her tour, I went to see that at the O2, and she did a, like, 20-minute monologue on, on sticky toffee pudding... That's random. ..and fish and chips, just what? chatting away and how she, it just it got stuck in her teeth. And then I think I knew that I was going to be doing the show and I'd heard her do this thing and I think I just must have said in an interview, I'm going to make her a sticky toffee pudding and present it to her on the day, but I, I, didn't. I didn't. And it just it stuck. I know, oh, it, it did. It's <laughs> on her rider. Yeah, yeah, it must be. Yeah, <laughs> it must have been pretty incredible sharing the stage of her, though. It was amazing. I mean, yeah. I, she's again, she's another one of my idols. Same, and yeah. I... I was so excited, but I was so nervous. And I, if someone had said to me at any point on the lead up to that show, do you know what? You don't have to do it. You can just go. I think I would have got in that cab and just left. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's almost I was it's like so a poster syndrome thing. And yeah. yeah, but you cover one of her tracks on the album, don't you? Yes. Yeah, it's a song called "I Surrender," which is on. It was on a new day for her. Okay. It was never a single for her. Right. But I, I absolutely loved it, and I did. I sang it on tour with Steps about. God, in our reunion tour in 2012, yeah, and we each did a solo, and I always had this thing. I just want to stand still and sing songs behind a mic in a big, lovely dress, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what I did. So oh, it's amazing. kind of coming. It's like revisiting that, but making it a bit more up tempo now. So it's yeah. not a big ballad anymore. We must talk about steps though, because it's been 25 years. You just celebrated. 26 oh, 26. <gasps> yeah. So you celebrated 26 years this year. Yeah. Um, does it feel that long? Because for me, I feel like Steps has always been in my life, you know, and I'm... Sorry about that. Slight, no, well, I'm a lot older than 26. <laughs> uh, no, but it, no, but it's very iconic and lots of us have grown up with it. Does it feel that long for you? Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. I, I can't believe that we are... It, it's been that long. I think I've been in Steps longer than I haven't been. Oh, right, OK. It's, it's more than half my life. And, and when we get together, it, we're still those idiot 20 year olds that yeah. were, were in the 90s and we aggressive. kind of revert back to the same and we got the same jokes yeah. and the same silly sayings that we've been saying for 26 years. Oh, I quite like that. It's like going home then. But it does. It feels safe. Yeah. It's like I always yeah. feel, I always know that I'm going to be okay. Mm. So you kind of worry about doing new things. Yeah. But when we're all together, it does, it feels like we just, we know each other so well and we know what we do so well that it's quite easy to yeah. slip back into it really quickly. And the fans still really want it. You headlined at Brighton Pride yeah. recently, didn't you? Was yeah. it, oh, there's a nice picture. Oh, there, oh very subtle necklace on H. That's yes, I mean, in. I think he wore everything that day. <laughs> That's <gorgeous. laughs> Bless him. Was it British summer that day? Was it pouring it down? No, it wasn't. No. It rained on the Saturday. Okay. It absolutely tipped it down. And then on the Sunday when we did it it was like the sun came out and it was yeah it was really special actually we had a couple of we did You've barely changed all of you i mean oh, oh no look at them they look the same don't they yeah, yeah. i'm sure there must yeah. be a filter on that oh well it's been so wonderful to chat with you and claire will be with us all morning and don't forget you can listen to claire's brand new album euphoria right now it is brilliant okay it's time for a little break but when we come back we'll be talking women's health with dr neetu it's stuff we should all know, men included. See you shortly. Welcome back to 
on My Breakfast Show. Dr Neetu will be joining us shortly to tell us about her impressive career and how we can all make sure we, all the women in our lives, are as healthy as can be. Claire Richards and Ben Miller are still on the sofa too and it is time for me to ask my guests to make a bit of noise about the people who have inspired them in my Sunday shout-outs. So whether that's a selfless parent or a supportive colleague or a superstar who has paved the way for them, so, Ben, we're going to start with you. Is there someone in your life that you want to shout about today on the show? There is, yes. I want to shout about Alexander Armstrong. Oh, wow. Oh, look at you both there. You look very oh, dapper. There very we are. Look, um, I owe so much to, to Alexander. So we started, it was just after university, we started doing sketch comedy in sort of London pubs. OK. And we had a few what we call potato years. Right. <laughs> all we could force you to eat was potatoes. He's the most amazing <laughs> cook. Yeah, yeah. And we used to just go and buy loads of sort of cheap root, ve root vegetables. He'd, he'd, um, he's the first person I ever saw put olive oil on a vegetable and bake it. Sounds wow. like a cooking book. A very exciting <laughs> moment for me. A whole new world. Very elite. Of possibility <laughs> opened up. And, um, yeah, and I couldn't believe it. You'd get carrots and put those in. You'd put leeks and all this kind of... It, was, yeah. it just blew my mind. Um, <laughs> the comedy was rubbish, but the food <laughs> was amazing. <laughs> and we... Um, yeah, and then we started doing our show on, I think, the Paramount Comedy Channel, then okay. Channel 4, then, um, then BBC. Um, so many... Two brilliant decades, really, the 90s yeah. and the noughties. So we, yeah. did, we finished with, like, a tour in, in uh, 2010. So... Um, I feel like I wouldn't be anywhere without him, oh, really. That's a lovely and I feel like I kind of owe it, ev everything to him. It's not, yeah. it's not just that he's the most brilliantly talented man. He's an amazing, he's an amazing person. But it's what you were talking about with, with uh, Steps. It's that support that you have. Yeah. yeah. At what would otherwise be, I think, quite a demanding sort of time. Yeah. What about you, Claire? Who do you want to shout about? Um, so mine, it's a similar thing actually, it was my music teacher at school. Oh, right, okay. Mr King, Secondary Stuart King. Secondary school. Secondary yeah. school, yeah. That was at his retirement oh. <laughs> a few years ago. But I, if it wasn't for him, I don't think I ever really would have sung in front of anybody. Oh, but my okay. mum and dad and my, yeah. well, my family. In the first year of secondary school, everybody had to do um, a practical music exam. And if you couldn't play an instrument, you had to sing. And I bought this easy to learn carpenter's book and I sang carpenter's song and about a week after it I he stopped me in the corridor and said you know you actually really can sing oh, wow. and I want you to sing that in assembly next week and I just went <gasps> and I was quite a goody two-shoes at school and because a teacher told me I had to do something I did it I honestly I honestly don't think yeah. without him I would have had the confidence to to try. It is yeah. so lovely to hear. It's really nice to hear about people that have supported others. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And speaking of support, my next guest has been supporting women for nearly 40 years. 23 of those as an OBS and gynae consultant. She discusses topics that people can find awkward, like fertility, menopause, PCOS. She's also an author and one of the earliest champions of lifestyle medicine. Give it up for Dr Neetu. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, thrilled to have you here today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what you do? It's su such an amazing career you've had and such important work. Yes, I absolutely love what I do. Never want to give it up. Um, I've been a doctor for over 40 years. Um, much of it spent in Ops and Gynae. Mm -hmm. I felt uh, women's health doesn't get enough of a platform. And so I trained in India moved to the UK, very lucky uh, to have really enjoyed what I do, but also helped women along the way. Mm. There's so much, there's a whole speciality in Obs and Gynae, but we don't have enough research. Isn't that strange? Yeah, in 2023. Yes. Yeah. So I realized as I went along, uh, while I was a surgeon and uh, prescribing medicines, there was something missing in my toolbox. Mm -hmm. uh, and I realized that was lifestyle medicine. Right, okay. Uh, so, Tell us what that means, lifestyle medicine then. Yeah, it's a fairly new discipline, but actually very old in uh, principles. It involves six pillars of um, health, which is evidence-based. Mm -hmm. Because I'm scientific, I want to only offer stuff that is scientific okay. and evidence-based. So it uses therapeutic approaches to reverse, to prevent and treat 
lots of chronic illnesses mm -hmm. and there's no aspect of women's health that does not benefit from lifestyle medicine. So it involves things like managing your stress, managing sleep, uh, understanding what foods we should be eating more of, you know, exercising and moving our bodies. I know these all sound very simple, uh, but you'd be surprised how as doctors, we were never taught nutrition, we were not, never taught lifestyle. Yeah. So it was a big shock for me to realize that I needed that just as much. Yeah, I suppose so that's the first point of call rather than pharmaceutical. Yes. Yeah. And it should also walk alongside, and that's the beauty about mm -hmm. lifestyle medicine. It's not saying all the wonderful advances that we've made in Western medicine uh, should be left behind. Yeah. It's not one or the other. So. Yeah. Now, Ben, you are a bit outnumbered here today in the <laughs> studio between us women. But, you know, when we talk about women's health, we're used to seeing it in women's magazines, maybe on female-led panel shows. But actually, men are so important in the discussion of women's health, aren't they? Absolutely, because most men will have women in their lives, mothers, sisters, partners, daughters. And so if you are not aware of that, and a lot of women's health conditions are hidden. Mm -hmm. They're not physically um, visible always. And so if you don't actually know about it, there was a survey in London uh, of young women, um, of women actually in 2020, one in two women did not know where their cervix was. Right. And cervical cancer is a completely preventable cancer. One in four did not know where their vagina was. So, you know, the men have to be brought into this conversation as well. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> so. well, I think even also it shouldn't just be targeted at a woman of a certain age no. because as a teenager you need to understand what your own mum is going through or your grandmother's going through so that you can uh, support them and that when you become perimenopausal that you understand you know the changes in your body so it shouldn't really be capped to just absolutely. a certain group. I mean Katie I had something called premature ovarian insufficiency. Right. My period stopped at 38 and being a typical doctor, working crazy hours, mm. um, I thought I was, I was being a bit bullied. There was a toxic work atmosphere that used to be quite common in uh, those days. Yeah. And what I was really going through was a very early menopause. Right. And I did not know where to turn. And this was me just on the threshold of becoming a consultant. Mm -hmm. And I did not know where to turn. So what chance do other people have? Uh, yeah. So which is why I've made it... I, I don't like the word mission, but I, I do want to, you know, highlight as many women's health issues yeah. because I'm an older style uh, obs and gynae uh, consultant, yeah. you know, delivered thousands of babies. I know what women go through and yeah. I want people to be aware because I always say nobody really knows your body better than you. Mm -hmm. So you have to be in tune with your body. Absolutely. So that you can actually... Yeah, you've put all this passion into a book. Uh, I love the front cover, actually, very eye-catching. <laughs> Living PCOS Free. Can you tell us a little bit about your, your new book? Yes, um, I'd been so busy until the pandemic and I decided this was a time to start writing my book. And I first thought I'd write a general book on women's health. Mm. And my daughter, Rohini, uh, who is our co -author, you know, my co-author in the book, she turned around and said to me, Mum, you have all these 35 years of experience. Why are you writing two pages on menopause and two mm. pages on PCOS? Why don't you write detailed your expertise that all your patients have been helped with? How old is your daughter then? Uh, sorry? How old is your daughter? She's now 34. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so she's a nutritionist right. and a lifestyle medicine professional. Oh, I but see. she herself uh, has got polycystic ovary syndrome. Mm -hmm. So she said, why don't we write a book that I needed somebody to write? Uh, because you, they always say you write the book that you, <laughs> wish, you wish you had. You read, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a lovely gift to give your daughter. So, yeah. and it was meant to be a really slim line book. And then I realized. Not so much. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized there are no books in PCOS that really bring the holistic view and the medical view together, mm. full of case studies, recipes, all the tips that people need. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted it to be like a one-stop yeah. uh, thing. And it was good because Rohini kept saying, Mom, go back to the drawing table <laughs> yeah. uh, because stop talking like a doctor. <laughs> she sounds like a tough editor. If I'm yeah. She is a very yeah. tough editor. And you're working on a, another book at the moment, aren't yes, you? Yes, I've just yeah. handed in my first draft. Oh, right. I'm very pleased with it. It's about um, menopause. It's called okay. Finding Me in Menopause. And so oh. I hope I'll come back to oh, talk to you about it. I'd love to yes. be back for that. Yeah, thank you. It's been lovely to talk to you, Dr. Neetu. And I know you've kindly agreed to stick around and answer some of our questions. My pleasure. So do make yourself comfy on the sofa. But we will have to wait for that until after this tiny break. We'll be back very soon, so don't you go anywhere. Welcome back to my break.
the show. Ben Miller, Claire Richards and Dr Nitu are still with me. Good job, because we still have half the show to go. <laughs> that would be quite a lonely show without them. Uh, now, Dr Nitu, before the break, we were chatting to you about your impressive career in women's health. Um, and we're super grateful that you've agreed to answer some of our questions. I put it out on social media all about the topic of women's health. And we were just flooded uh, with tons and tons of questions. So we've selected a few to put to you. Uh, we had quite a lot of questions, uh, not surprisingly, on HRT. Of course. So there's a couple here uh, that came in on Instagram. Uh, Joanne says, what are your thoughts on hormone replacement therapy? And then Mary also wants to know, if you don't feel like you need HRT, is there anything else you can take that's more natural? Absolutely. So my thoughts on hormone replacement therapy, it's safe mm -hmm. for the vast majority of women who should have it. Okay. You should not be denied HRT if you're having symptoms that are stopping you from going about your daily life. Um, but there are women who can't have it. And of oh, course, really? we know that women who have a history of cancer, um, generally speaking, and one in seven women get diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. So we know that many women can't take HRT if they have clotting issues and right. other medical issues. But for the vast majority of women in their 40s and 50s, ideally before the age of 60, to start HRT has got so many benefits. Mm. Because hot flushes, night sweats, and there are about 34 different symptoms. Uh, yeah. They really can make a huge difference for those who want it and need it. And how can you find out if you're suitable or unsuitable for it then? So you would know, um, you should see a, a health professional, a qualified yeah. health professional who will take a detailed medical history. Okay. And then based on your family history, your medical and surgical history, you pretty much will know and anybody who's got experience will be able to guide you. Yeah. Blood tests are not really helpful okay. uh, and so there are sadly a lot of clinics that offer these tests. Really they should be reserved for those under 45. The average age of menopause is between 45 and 55 right. with about 51 years being okay. um, generally you know, the, the age. And then, like Mary said, what if you don't want to take HRT? Is there anything natural that you yes. turn to? Yes, there's where lifestyle medicine comes in. Right, okay. Whether you take HRT or not, lifestyle has to play a role. And it's never too early, never too late to bring in lifestyle mm -hmm. because it's got to stand you. Remember that, you know, we become menopausal in our 50s for most women and we live into our 80s. So you have got all those 30 years. Most women won't be taking HRT all those years. Mm -hmm. So you want to bring in the diet, the lifestyle into it. So that's what I would stay away from lots of herbal supplements and oh, really? things simply because that's we don't have the, you have to have evidence. Yeah. You have to have big enough trials. Okay. So, and they can sometimes do more harm than good. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. That's good to know. All right. We've had another one in. This one came in on Instagram and it says, how often do I need a breast examination? Does it change after a certain age? So in the UK, we, I would advise all women to be breast, well, all over the world, be breast aware yourself. Mm. Do not expect a health professional to really examine your breasts. They're going to be examining them for the first time. They're not going to know how your breasts feel. So get mm -hmm. to know your breasts. And that's for men as well. So you need to know your breasts. And for so those... Breasts, uh, men should examine their own, their own breast tissue Yes, well. because breast yeah. cancer can occur in men as yeah. well. And it is important to... If you are somebody who has periods, then you should examine your breasts just after a period when the breasts are the most quiet. Okay. And then if you find something, and there are lots of ways of examining, and you can watch it on YouTube if you want to, mm -hmm. uh, or go onto my Instagram or TikTok yeah. <laughs> where I talk about these things. And it is important to actually examine yourself, and then if you find a problem, never ignore it, because yeah. we know women of color, for example, they start having uh, quite aggressive breast cancer as early in their 40s. Right, okay. So mammograms and ultrasound tests may be needed. And so it's important to keep all the national screening guidelines rather than having excess tests or not having tests at all. Yeah. So your cervical smear, your breast examination and breast mammograms, all these things are important for women and for men where it applies to keep. Okay, we had another question in, um, and this one came in on our Instagram. It's from Alice. She says, does endometriosis progress in stages? That is a fantastic question. Right. It's one of my special interests. So endometriosis is where tissue similar to the lining of your womb grows outside. And, you know, there are four stages, but actually in my 35, 40 years of experience dealing with endometriosis, I'm pretty certain that it's either mild Mm -hmm. endometriosis or minimal endometriosis that never really progresses to moderate or severe endometriosis okay. and often 
baby girls are born with endometriosis. It's just that we okay. find out much later. It takes about seven years to diagnose endometriosis. Right. Painful periods, heavy periods, painful sex, chronic fatigue. We never talk about these things. So you'd but, just be living with those symptoms and Yes, and going to doctors who will okay. say, you know, it, that's normal. Or your mother telling you, I had painful periods. Likely she had uh, endometriosis too. Yeah. Uh, you know, so no, it doesn't really progress in stages. Okay. But it, it can cause just as many symptoms, even with a few spots too. Yeah. And fertility right. issues, of course. Thank you so much, Dr. Anita. It's, it's such an important subject and it's been really, really helpful. You know, sometimes we can feel uncomfortable to approach these topics. So it's so great that you are continuing to write these books. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Dr. Anita, everyone. <laughs> You can get Dr. Neetu's book, Living PCOS Free. It's out now. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Casey Piper's Breakfast Show, where we let you know about the future experts and give you the chance to send in your questions. Now, Ben, we were just chatting to uh, Dr. Neetu. It's your turn because she's had four decades in her industry, and you're not far off that in showbiz now. 30, Is that right? Well, 30 years, isn't it? 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness me. That went fast. And some really iconic <laughs> roles. I mean, I've got a list of the iconic roles. Lord Featherington in Bridgerton, Colonel Lancaster in Paddington 2, D.I. Paul in Death in Paradise. Is there a dream role even left to play, or have you done it all? Bond. I'm going to be James Bond. Oh, I can now reveal. Yeah. <laughs> I can now and reveal. There's the exclusive we need. I yeah. am the next James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> um. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, they're going in a slightly different direction yeah. to, to so many other films. But, you know, the franchise has, you know, it's been spinning its wheels for a while. And I think it's time somebody That's injected fine. some new energy and, and, uh, and commitment. I read that you wanted to play a horror character. I'd love to be in a horror film. Yeah. yeah. I don't watch horror films because I... They, I can't stand it. No, they terrify me. Yeah. I hate being scared. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know why people enjoy no, it. I However, don't. fun to be in, I think. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Fun to be in a, a horror film. My sister uses um, crime podcasts to fall asleep. Like really? She lays her headphones really? on and listens I to like murder. I love those yeah. to sleep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing like really a good murder to knock off. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we've really lightened the mood of the show. Okay. There we, go. Uh, we should talk about your ITV show uh, because we're loving you as Professor T, um, and it's coming back new series, isn't it? It's very exciting. So uh, we're in, we're, we've just literally just stopped filming on series three, season okay. three. So in the first two seasons, you get introduced to this character. He's a bit of an oddball. He's germophobic. Um, he's OCD. He's uh, clearly had a lot of trauma in his, his childhood, right. um, one of the things that seems to be the case is that he has these sort of recurring flashbacks of holding a shotgun up to his father's chest and there's some oh, idea wow. of whether he was involved in his father's death. Anyway, the first two seasons, we're sort of really getting to know this character. And in this third season that's about to come out, you get the answers to all those questions. You find oh, out exactly okay. what the trauma was yeah. that, um, that he experienced in his childhood, as well as every week him solving another really baffling crime, which is yeah. most of the fun of the show. Is, yeah, yeah, is yeah. He's a kind of sort of almost like a Sherlock Holmes type character who solves the thing almost immediately and then sort of needs to prove to himself that he got it right. Yeah. Um, it's kind of an, almost like the other way round, sort of the way you'd usually do a detective show. You share some similarities with him, though, don't you? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, no, I do. I, I, had, I have OCD myself and... I mean, mine doesn't uh, manifest in exactly the same way. Mm. I mean, he's, he's um, quite an extreme version of it. But okay. I feel like I really know what that feels like from the inside, yeah. from the inside out. I had um, uh, CBT to help with my right. uh, OCD. And it's been, it's been amazing, actually. The, yeah. But he's, he, this is one of the fun things about the show, is he's having therapy and yeah. he's starting to sort of... Because he's, he's at the very beginning of that journey of trying to find out who he is and, and, yes. and what effect all this trauma has had on yeah. him. Yeah, and it was filmed somewhere close to your heart, wasn't it? This is really strange. So I went to Cambridge University. I wrote my very first comedy sketches at Cambridge University and the exact house, I think it was just in that photo there, the exact house where I wrote those first sketches is the location... Oh, really? Wow. ..of Professor T. Oh, that's pretty cool. And, um... Yeah. Uh, can you imagine how... Bizarre that was turning yeah, up. You know, 
before? You just no idea. I mean, I thought it was a joke when yeah, I yeah, and yeah. they were sort of setting uh, the very first scene is a childhood scene. They they built a swing in the garden, and you know they you know they changed what is basically student accommodation to look like yeah. you know a sort of domestic house. I was kind of thinking, <laughs> sorry, was it was anybody yeah. <laughs> here in 1994? <laughs> 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 so circle. bizarre. Yeah. Really bizarre. So it's not just acting. Uh, you've written eight books, and we have your new book here, uh, Once Upon a Legend. Yes. Uh, love the cover here. And so this suggests to me you've got you have children, don't you? you have, I uh, do. So I have my oldest is 17, and I've got an 11 year old. Mm. I can sort of rehearse this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I have an eight year old as well. So a girl, boy, boy. So do they get to see first? draft before you they do I mean part yeah. of my they are my um, focus group basically right so, okay you know the conversations in the back of the car when I'm driving them to school are quite yeah. often the starting point for stories in fact this story began because we went we were going walking uh, I live in Gloucestershire and uh, Wiltshire's the next county there's this amazing walk you can do around Pusey the Vale of Pusey oh yeah it's very beautiful and there's there. this huge mound called the Giant's Grave and there's another one in Silbury just about you know, 20, 30 miles away, and another one in Marlborough. And I had this idea that wouldn't it... And it's, the one in Marlborough is amazing. It's right in the middle of the town. Yeah. So you've got this sort of Neolithic mound. They think it's about 3,000 years old, right? And all the town has built up around it. I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if you went to a school... If you were a kid and you were at school, a bunch of kids, and they discover that the mound in the grounds of their school is a sleeping giant. Oh, wow, OK. Because um, yeah. there's this myth. I don't know if you yeah. heard this myth that, that the very first inhabitants of the British Isles were giants. Right. And that the last one, I think, was supposed to have been killed off by King Arthur. OK, I didn't know that, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> randomly. <laughs> um, and, and that they... One of the stories is that the giants went to sleep and they formed these hills. Wow. So yeah. when I... Oh, there we go. The giants there. Of course, well, it ends in scared. a scrap, like all yeah. good adventure stories. Yeah. Ends in a big fight on Westminster Bridge between the good giant and the bad giant. So the good giant becomes the boy's, you know, the kid's friend. And, of course, the bad giants wake up as well. And they yeah. want revenge on the humans for ruining <laughs> the British countryside. Can yeah. you imagine? You seem so animated talking about this. <laughs> Is there a real joy in being able to bring this to life? I've basically Asia? never grown, grown up. Yeah. So <laughs> writing children... I don't, I don't think there's any better job in the world than writing stories for children between about the ages of seven... Yeah. And eleven. They're it's escapism minds, almost. It's it's total escapism. Yeah. They're fully formed as people, yeah. but they don't have a grain of cynicism about life. They're completely enthusiastic about everything. Their imaginations are extraordinary. Yeah. Their vocabularies are. And you go out and meet them because you go on tours in schools, don't you? Take the books to schools. Yeah. I do readings. I talk about. It's a great opportunity to discuss. You know. Uh, like British history or mm. you know, talk about anything that the story might bring up that they would be interested in. But yeah. it's also, it's also I also miss doing comedy, so it's, it's a chance to sort of lark around <laughs> in front of a <laughs> captive yeah. audience. Yeah. They can't leave, yeah. unlike the fringe. Yeah. The school assembly, it's just They're like not allowed to leave. You, yeah. It's like you were talking with your teachers, you know, they have, they have to be there, they yeah. have to listen to the talk. Yeah, nothing like a forced audience. I know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great talking to you, Ben. And don't forget, you can get Ben's book, Once Upon a Legend, right now. OK, it's time for the final break. When we come back, we'll be repurposing our old plastic bags in my creative corner. Don't you go anywhere. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to my breakfast show. Now, it's not long until we pop over to my creative corner. This week, we have an upcycling workshop where we'll be making recycled wallets. But ahead of that, it is time for you to both complete me. Don't worry, I'm not in need of a new life partner. <laughs> oh, I don't know, 11 years of marriage, that might be quite exciting. <laughs> um, this is just a little game that I like to play with my guests. So I'm going to have a sentence come up here on the screen, and all you need to do is complete that sentence for me. So, Claire, we're going to start with you first. Let's okay. see what we've got for you. So finish this sentence. My favourite place to be in the whole world is, apart from the sofa here at the breakfast yeah. show. Well, I'm not going to be much more exciting than that. It is really on my sofa at home. Yeah, I get you. I'm the same. Watching You've got TV. a special spot on the sofa. Yeah, so. I don't have to sit on this on the right hand side. Where you are now. Yeah. Oh. This is exactly. If anybody did she sits... fight you for this seat. Yeah, she <laughs> <did>. <laughs> we did actually. Yeah. If anybody else sits in my seat, I have to. I'm yeah. like, uh, what are you doing? Move. Yeah, my, I've and got that. It's all sunk yeah. where I sit. Yeah. yeah it's a bit worn and sunk. 
<laughs> Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I just, I'd like, you know, being at home with the family. Yeah. A glass of wine, something. What are you on doing on your You watching telly? Yeah, watching TV. Watching, watching TV. TV. Watching TV. Nice. Yeah. Everybody. I love TV. I love watching yeah. TV. Yeah. Okay, Ben, you're up. Uh, here's one for you. So complete this sentence. One of my most impressive skills <laughs> is. Um, so um, I've got this weird ability. I mean. I don't know where it comes from. I don't see. It. I don't seem to have inherited it. it doesn't seem to be come down to my, my family at all. But I can be. You can show me a car boot and a pile of luggage, and I don't know how I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you exactly what will fit into the car boot. I'm going Amazing. to Spain tomorrow. Come, yeah, come it's home like, with me today. It's like I'll go. I'll kind of look at. I'll kind of look at the luggage. I'll go. Mm, or I'll go. Hmm. <laughs> and you know, we just went on. Oh, we just went on holiday to Spain. We get there, and you know, of course, the hire car is like, it's, it's like a mini hire. It's like it doesn't look like the picture yeah. on yeah, the. Yeah, yeah, Never. It's been photoshopped. Never. It's been yeah. photoshopped. Yeah. You know, and it literally couldn't. We couldn't fit the kids in it, let alone the the luggage. But, <laughs> but I kind of. Kids. But then I kind of. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move Lana over to the seats. We're going to do this. We're going to put the luggage in sideways, and literally. Dum, 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 See, I would just always choose the luggage over the kids. Especially <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I did. We left the kids behind. That was the only yeah. solution, to leave them at the port. It was, it was inevitable. We'll come back for you later. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, babe. I feel like I did bag some real nuggets of info there. OK, it's that time when we head over to my creative corner and learn artistic skills from somebody who knows their stuff. This week, we're turning old bags into wallets. <laughs> yes, you heard me right. Claire, I know you're a fan of crafting. I'm not yes. calling you an old bag. I was going to say, are we really turning me into a wallet. <laughs> Are you oh both God. up for this challenge? Absolutely. Yeah, Ben? Yeah, I, well, like I say, I need a new wallet, so I'm really, <laughs> Okay, I'm well, engaged. let's take a look and see what we're getting up to. And here I am in my creative corner where I'm joined by Rachel Pullen. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the corner. Uh, this is a very unusual craft that maybe not a lot of people would have heard of. Absolutely. Um, so we, none of us like plastic bags, but mm -hmm. sadly we can't get away from them. But actually they're really easy to upcycle at home. Um, we can just use our iron and create fabrics which comes out like a leather. So okay. if you imagine anything that you make with leather, so I'm just make seeing all these with yeah. the plastic. So we've got wallets here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, little card holder. This is a coaster. Yeah, coaster. Yeah. Table it, mats. It's purses. Sort of like leather, doesn't it? It really it does. Like it really it. feels like leather. Okay. Is this a uh, picture of some kind of garden bag? Absolutely. Then? So what are Ben and Claire going to make today then? Okay, so we're going to make the fabric. Okay. So I'll go over and help them. Okay. Okay, so what I've got for you is a sheet just cut out of single plastic. Okay. Right. And like what you're going liner. to do, just a bit of bin liner, and you're going to use the different pieces of plastic. You're going to build up a layer on top. Like this? Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to place the baking paper. Now, this is very important because you don't want to melt the plastic onto the iron. Might try to make a pattern with it. Absolutely. So we're going to go with four layers. Okay. So you don't want to use all of the best bits <laughs> on the top layer because okay. then they disappear inside. So less is more, right? Less is more. Yeah. yeah. So it's not less is more, but it's more. Do you have to heat a layer at a time, or can you do the you layers? You can do layers? like two layers at a time, but I wouldn't try to do all four layers at the top at a time. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so. Right. Yeah, sort of building it up. So you want to cover the whole thing. So now, and then you're going to place gonna this on top it. and you're going to iron it. Oh, you're very bold in that iron. Yeah. Very bold with the no iron. No hesitation very at all. Iron. Okay. Then. Love my ironing. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! That shirt looks like it could do an iron. <laughs> <laughs> Don't iron my shirt. I do like that to iron plastic. Be, yeah. And can Is you that see good? It? Yeah, melt it in. So then you just keep going. You're just going to build okay. up different build layers. It it's quite hot. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it'll get quite hot, okay. but um, just build up more layers and just keep ironing. Okay. 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 Quite so am I doing something different? Oh. Then? What okay, so doing? we're using the fabric that we've made. Okay. And we're going to make it into a purse. Right. Okay. So okay. we've got a template, <laughs> and we're going to draw around <laughs> our template. This is our template. Yeah. This is our template. And this is upcycled. What? Just this is just yeah, and just old cardboard. Okay. Absolutely. So we're going to pop it on top and draw around it. It's a great feeling, isn't it, when you're upcycling stuff? Um, oh, absolutely. And actually making it into something useful. Absolutely. So um, I set up my company, uh, Craft My Day, about seven years ago now. Right. And we are very passionate about craft, but we are just as passionate about upcycling and recycling. Yeah. And, uh, we use all sorts of 
And that's kind of half the fun. If you're doing it with kids, if they can find stuff around the house and make use of it, that's part of the Absolutely, the absolutely. Fun, so. We make a lot of art and um, sculptures and all sorts. <laughs> all sorts. <laughs> and you, you teach... Uh, Classic, it's to shoot. Classic oh, I've yeah, absolutely. So we have, we on? actually have over forty workshops that oh, run yeah, at our okay. studio. Okay, so I'm just cutting around this, following yep. my line, all the okay. way around. And all of these bits that you cut off, actually, when we make another sheet, we can add those in oh, to the other sheets. So even the offcuts. Yeah, useful, exactly. Yeah. Even, especially if you're doing something okay. like this, which is a, a table mat. Yes. You can use slightly thicker pieces in there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, if you imagine, when we fold it. Yeah. That is our little purse. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Super simple. Simple. That right, do you think? yeah that fabulous. Right? That's right. I want quite a deep purse. Yeah, for my excellent. Purse. So what we're going to do now is we're going to choose a popper. Okay. And you can choose which colour you think is going to go. I always gravitate to pink. So fabulous. Yeah. I always gravitate to purple. So. Okay. So we're going to take one of the ones that looks like a drawing pin. Mm-hmm. Where you? And in this section that's going to come up. Okay. We're going to put it. Where you want your poppers so you in the middle, stab it, oh, and we're just going to stab okay. it through. Oh, it comes through quite easily. It comes through really oh, yeah. easily, doesn't it? Okay. Okay. So then we're going to fold There's it. Lots of sniggering going on. This <laughs> Claire's looks so beautiful. Mine looks I mean, it really so does. bad. <laughs> so we're going to just fold it over okay. as if we were closing the purse. Yeah. And we're just going to. I'm going to make mine a bit deeper, actually, just like that. Yeah. yeah. I'll make mine a bit deeper. And actually. then I'm just going to put my press it through. Oh, right, okay. Just so that it... Yes, yeah, so if you close right it there. and then see where it's going to pop through, oh, just yeah. so that when we... And then we can open it again. Okay. When we put this one on, yeah. it will just show us where to do it. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Right. Makes it easier. Yes, got you. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put one of the... Either the in or the out, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. And we've got a gadget. Oh, I love a gadget. I know. Got to have a, like a real gadget. crafter. Absolutely. Yeah. You need a gadget, yeah. don't you? So okay. this is basically it just squashes. Okay. So we're just going to feed it in. Oh, I've been trusted with all sorts of this show. A little bit tricky because you and, <laughs> and then you making me squeeze it. Okay. And it just squeezes the centre right. down. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah fabulous. Works, Easy, Lovely. hey? Okay. Okay, so then we're going to do the other one. Okay, so, so take the pin again. Take the pin right. again, pop that through the little hole that we... You yeah. can see the holes. It's a tough material, isn't it? It's it really, really, really... It even looks like leather on that absolutely, side. Absolutely, and it's so versatile. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then we're going to, again, pop right. that on top, and, and then you're going to the squeeze it again. Okay, okay, so now what we're going to do oh, is we're going to just seal it. Uh -huh. So with the same process that we did over there. Oh, I see. I'm just folding it into position. Oh, my goodness. This is and the most I'm adorable iron I've ever seen. Is it's that a craft very, iron? It's actually a travel iron, but I think it's mostly used by crafters. Or people that iron their pants in hotel rooms. <laughs> <laughs> it's tiny. I know, it's, it's so like cute. And iron. it comes with a little uh, mat, so you can okay. just do it on your table right. rather than having to have an so iron. So you're board. setting it. So I'm melting. just melting the edge. Okay. So if you are doing this it. with kids at home, maybe this is the bit you probably supervise and help Absolutely. With. Yeah. We also do a lot that where we sew them on the sewing machine. Oh, yeah, these are gorgeous. And then the stitching's like a bright colour. It's a nice Exactly. Color, isn't it? Yeah. What's this one? This is a... Oh, sunglasses. That's cute. OK, lovely. I think it's time for a reveal. Shall we see how you guys have got on? Let's have a look. Let's have a look at yours, Claire, first. Oh, very nice. Fabulous. Really? Yeah. But it's sort of chaotic and wild well, at once, isn't it? I like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. getting bits of look, sort of Star Spangled Banner. That's right. Yeah. Ben's super and, yeah, proud. He can't put his down. But yeah. He's going to make a great eye patch. Nice focal point there. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually really And cool. I think when you make them into something, again, it sort of takes it another step. Yeah, right? because then you'll what cut you it. In all seriousness, the text, text is really nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Really nice. It does yeah. feel really yeah. quite robust as well. And here's my purse. La da. Do you like it? Feeling very QVC over here. <laughs> <laughs> this is cute. Yeah. And yours is nice to say, isn't it? Gorgeous. Well, thank you so much. I feel like we've learned so much. Are you going to carry this on at home? Yeah. yeah, we're thinking of uh, yes. setting up a small business, aren't we? Absolutely. Applying for a grant. Yeah. Nice. Uh, <laughs> early days, but we'll keep you posted. We like yeah. to encourage this kind of growth. Great. <laughs> well, if you fancy making up circled wallets or want to have a go at any of Rachel's classes, just search Craft My Day online. And with that, I am sad to say that we are done for another week. If you want to go over any of this workshop again or you've missed any of today's show, you can always catch up on ITVX.